Okay. So I'm going to create a function. The first function I'm going to use is the same one that was in the slideshow, but I'm actually going to create it. It's to roll dice. So the syntax is create function. But some of you may remember that during the slideshow I had or replace. Now what create what or replace does is if this function already exists, it basically replaces the definition of the function. Um, there is a limit to what or replace will do. It will replace the function only if you don't change the return type. So if you change the return type, you have to drop the function. And so you create a function, give it a name. Yeah, create or replace. Um, and if, like I said, if you change the return type of the function, it will give you an error. I guarantee it. So you can call your functions anything you want, but I tend to cross prefix mine with fn, just so that it's obvious that I'm dealing with a function and not a table. Okay. So function dice roll. Now, right now I've got no arguments. I'm going to actually give myself two arguments. And you guys know these as parameters in Java. So you know how you create a new function, uh, like a new method for your class, and you add... Um, that could I just call they're not, well, they're variables, but you know, as part of your function call, you can define certain parameters. Well, in database land and other languages other than Java, they're known as arguments. Okay, function arguments, but that's okay. They're arguments. So I'm going to call one number of dice, and it's going to be an integer. And the second one's going to be um, sides, also an integer. It's going to return an integer as. So, so far what I've said, I've said I'm going to create a function. It's going to have two arguments and it's going to return an int. Now, I do this in Java, but I don't know how to code the stuff in Java to actually make it look right for you guys. Um, but essentially, it'd be... Is it like, was it like function, void, whatever? Is it function type, whatever. Anyways, so what I'm doing here is I'm creating a function called dice roll. I'm going to have two parameters, the number of dice and the number of sides. It returns an integer. And then we do our, the double dollar signs. This is when you start telling the code to start ignoring semicolons. And then you tell it what language this is written in. Uh, let me make that a little bit bigger. There we go. Significantly improved. This parameter is important um, because in Postgres needs to know what language you wrote, whatever is between the dollar signs. So unless it knows what's between the dollar signs, it's not going to be able to help you. So I'm going to declare, because the first thing you're supposed to do inside of here is declare your variables. If you're going to have any variables inside your code, and you're going to, you, then if you insist on having variables inside your code, you have to declare them before you begin code block. If you don't declare your variable first, you will get an error, and it's going to say, I don't know anything about this variable. Okay, so I'm going to have a variable called roll total. And it's an integer. And I'm going to put in my begin and my end block. So all the magic happens in here between these two things. Now, Postgres has a few little quirks. When you deal with variables in Postgres, when you declare a variable, as in you first declare this variable exists, it defaults to null. And depending on whose math you're asking, right, Amy? What happens if you take 1 plus null? In certain math theories, it says you're going to get 1. In a database server, it says you're going to get null. Because in the database server, nulls rule all. In other words, the 1 gets absorbed into the null. It's like a black hole of information. Therefore, you always have to initialize your variable. Even though it's been declared, 
you haven't initialized it yet. You have to make sure that, even though right now you have a box, but you don't, you haven't told what the inside of the box is like. So now you have to tell what the inside of the box is like. So how do you do that? You go, my variable has been initialized to zero. Hot damn. Now, what I want to do is I want to randomly generate numbers. And the, I also want to say how many times to go through. So you use a for loop. And that's wrong. And I always have a heck of a time with this stupid syntax. Give me a second. It's like one of those things, you know when you know you know what it what it is, and then Yeah, I just always forget the syntax. I can when I see it, it's great. Yeah, that's the one word in. Thanks. I lost my screen. So, any and everybody kind of looks at this syntax and goes, oh my god, that's awful. And it is. This is unlike any syntax I've seen anywhere else. This is the same thing for those of you that are curious as this. So for those of you that knew what, that that's like a Java style for loop, or what they call a C-like for loop, this is the same thing. It just looks funny. Now, I'm gonna go roll total is, is equal to the roll total plus, because we wanna keep adding to the roll total if we're going to go multiple times through. The function is called random. Um, Java people keep trying to put in the word rand. It's random. And so what random is going to do is it says random times number of sides. Random always returns a number between z 0 and 1. And <laughs> people are going, what do you mean a number between 0 and 1? It's the same thing in Java. Random always returns a number between 0 and 1. Basically, it's a float. And But when you multiply it by a number, it adds, basically, it moves the decimal place over a little bit. Um, So because it's always below 1, you want to add 1. I like using floor. Some people like using trunk. It does the same thing. And here's my function. Um, I don't know if this is going to work yet. I'm, I'm winging it as I go here. So usually the big problem people have at this point, you go, how do I test my function? Let me just make this a little taller. Uh, two dice by six. And when I hit run, I get an error message. Now, let's try to work our way through this error message so we can understand it. Here it shows syntax error near end. A lot of people yesterday figured out that the error message for this kind of stuff means you made a mistake before this. Anybody spot my mistake? I actually did it on purpose. Anybody spot my mistake? Missing my semicolon. Unlike Java, where it says, hey, you made a mistake in your code and think I'm not going to build. This will build it. The function was created, then it blew out when you actually tried to run it. So I'm going to rerun it, and I got another one. Now I'm going, control reached end of function without return. 
Well, that's not a surprise. It's just like Java, if you create a function that's not a void function, it, you have to return something. We try it again. And I got a number. Yay! Three, six, seven, two, eight, seven. Boop, boop, boop. Now we got, we're rolling numbers between. Did I ever get past 10 yet? Oh, I got 12. So it's working. So two six sided dice. Let's see if I can roll a natural 20. And a lot of people in this room didn't get that joke. And there you go, that's two, two dice of 20. So that's a dice roll function. I could actually get you guys to write games totally in this. And I've seen people do it, where you can actually write a function that calls a function, you can actually start a game. Based on the arguments, it'd be like a guessing game. It's kind of cool. Um, so that's a dice roll function. It's cute. It doesn't help you guys with anything with uh, characters, though. I'm showing you how to do numbers, but not characters. So once you guys are ready, I'll um, I'll erase this screen full of stuff, and I'll go on to the next function, which shows you how to deal with uh, letters and numbers together. And if anybody's getting errors, let me know. Maybe I can spot your mistake for you. All right. Of course it means. Okay, so this includes a really good example of parts of how you can generate a phone number, just so you know. You could use this as part of your generate a phone number code. But the problem is with the phone number, it also has characters in it, right? Brackets and dashes, and, right? So we're really working with alphanumerics. So anybody else having errors? Can I clear the screen? I have recorded this. And this code should be almost identical to what's on this PowerPoint. You got a problem? Okay. And that should be the code that's almost identical to the PowerPoint presentation. So, you know, let's have Does you have to tell the interpreter what language it's using? Okay. Uh, now you got very well. Uh, and that should have to start with, uh, yeah. Now it's all just debugging. Language? Because that's the language that's always installed by default everywhere. Default. 
programming language is up to us. If you don't want to do only something else, you have to tell it it's written in something else. Well, that means you have to install all the other languages, and you have to install all the extensions, and make sure it makes itself So I think mean, you've got to use PLP as well, because that's going to be like that. All of those messes have. Okay? No problem. All right, next function. Okay, it's going away. But I am going to keep my skeleton and save myself a little bit of typing. I'm going to create a function called create password. And I'm actually going to be Googling while I do this because I don't remember one of the functions I need. So just putting it out there. As you can see, I'm going to make a function that has no arguments. It's always going to create a password and it's always going to be the same size. So I've created my basic pieces here. So what I've done so far is I've made sure that my code structure is correct. It's one way, it's a good way of making sure that you don't make any stupid mistakes. Is if you use with a basic skeleton of your code ahead of time so that, you know, there's going to return stuff that you need. And in this one, it's actually supposed to return a var car. And that's all the bits and pieces you need. Now I'm just going to whip open Google for a second. I'll just be just a moment while you guys finish setting yourselves up. Okay, there we go. I just have to go refresh my memory how to do something. So I'm going to create a basic function, and what it's going to do is it's going to create a 10 out of 10 character password. And we, I'll make it fancier after. So this so far looks fairly similar. Now remember what I said earlier about variables? What's going to happen if you use a null variable? Nothing. You end up noise, right? So we'll want to make sure that we initialize our string to nothing. Note, I'm using single quotes, not double quotes, Java people. Because Java lets you use doubles. You know, they're, they're, 
single and double quotes have different meaning. Single and double quotes have a different meaning in, in Postgres. Um, double quotes is used as an object identifier. So you want to call an object after like a system object. Like this, I'd create a table called number. You need to put it in quote marks so it knows that it's actually called number and it's not, you're not calling the function called number. Yeah, yes. With the same argument type? Yeah. Yeah, no, put in an or replace, create or replace. What? At the top, create or replace. Okay, so I got a return pass. It's set to nothing. So now I'm going to loop and create 10 digit things. So this is a chunk of code I just pasted in. I didn't feel like typing it in. But I will explain what it's doing in just a second. Okay, now this looks like gobbledygook, and I know it does. Here's a few of the things that are they should be aware of. This is how you concatenate in Postgres. So you want to take string A and glue on string B. What you guys are used to seeing as an OR in Java is concatenate in Postgres. Isn't it there is a concat function, but it behaves differently. But can I use concat? If you insist on using it, yes, but you may have weird mileage. Uh, could you explain that concat expects a set number of arguments, and if you just so happen to not generate an argument it wants, it's going to blow up. Whereas if you're using con the concatenation operator instead. It guarantees that what's on the left is also going to work with what's on the right. Concatenate some function, you're depending on whether or not it's going to behave right. This is an operator, not a function. Okay. That's the difference. Uh, in general, the, the, the operator is faster than the function. <laughs> because when you call the function, it actually has to call the function, execute the function, return a value out of the function. And you know what that concat function is actually doing? This. So you're just calling something extra. For optimization purposes, this is actually faster. So there's no real reason to use concat? Not in Postgres. If you work with MySQL, yes. Because MySQL does not have a concatenation operator. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my return password to be equal to the return password, and then I'm going to glue on something. What this is going to do is going to build it up one character at a time, one after another. Now, this looks like noise, and I know it does. Okay, random you've seen. Time, so random times 48 means give me a number between 0 and 48. Integer, see this little thing here, this double colon? Uh, have, you, have you guys been taught about casting it in Java class? Casting a variable as another data type? What this is doing is it's saying this is a num, even though that this is a number that has decimal places, if you cast it as an integer, what happens to a number with decimal places if it suddenly becomes an integer? You'd have no decimal places. It's the same thing as using floor or trunk. But I, sh I figured I'd show you guys the casting because you can also cast a number to a, to a string. Uh, it's a bit like how you might in Java, you might have. Uh, Let's say you got an integer field and you go two string. Is that what it's called in Java? Two string? I know that's what it is in C sharp and C. So then, you know, Python and PHP, so I figured it was the same in Java. But it was you could go C equivalent to going two string. Um, they're saying whatever I do in front of this, treat it as an integer. This function called ASCII, and how many of you guys know what an ASCII chart is? The ASCII chart, oh, one hand. The ASCII chart is the list of characters and their numeric value in decimals for all the letters and numbers below 128. So that's basically what they call the 8-bit ASCII chart. Now, the ASCII chart is much bigger because it handles all these different languages. 
Um, but essentially what this is doing is saying, take the lowercase a, ask, he says, give me the numeric value of a, which if I remember right is uh, 32, I think, off the top of my head. So now what it's doing is it's taking 32 plus some random number, and it uh, says, CHR says, turn this back into a letter. Here, I'll, I'll run this by itself for you so you can see what it does. So I'm going to run this. If you look in the result, oh, there's a curly. There's an S, a U, space, an X, T, a 1, J, random. Random crap coming out of there. If I were to just go... the ASCII of A, and I run that. Oh, it's actually 97. Apparently, I really misremembered my numbers. Oh, I bet you. I haven't worked with an ASCII chart in years. Oh, there's 65. OK, so I want to start with a capital A instead of lowercase a. So this is going to give me, actually, if I go back one more, and I go ASCII, zero of the number zero, that's going to give me yet another one, which is 48. So 48 plus, you know, add up all the numbers. So if I start this with a zero, and I go 48 random characters, it'll give me a whole range of letters and numbers. And that should build up. Let's see if it works on the first try. Never. Uh, line four at assignment one two Oh, it helps to not assign a string to, a, to an integer. And I'm getting nothing back. Fantastic. This is the same problem I was having yesterday with concatenating nulls. Now I just got to figure out what I'm doing wrong. The 48 is wrong. You might be right. Yes. What's your question? Oh, I thought somebody said they had a question. Okay. So I'm going to create another variable. Now I'm going to start debugging and the joy of debugging. And it's actually kind of good for you guys to see how problematic the debugging can be in this. So I'm going to actually pull this out. I'm going to try it. And I get nothing because I'm missing a semicolon. Go. Well, the good news is my code's still working. The bad news is it's not working at all. So I'm going to show you guys one of the more useful um, things. You know how you're used to be able to put in a breakpoint and see what's happening? Or in Java, you can send something out to the system out. Is it called system out? Well, functions and triggers in Pro and Postgres have something similar. It's called raise notice. So I'm going to go raise notice, and then I give it a mask. Like that. Now, what's going to happen? This is a placeholder. So the percent sign is a placeholder. Uh, did you learn about sprintf? 
Did you, did you guys have that in Java? Printf? Print formatted? Yeah. Well, this is similar print formatted where you know when you put placeholders in your string and then you give it a bunch of variables after the fact and it rebuilds up your string based on what you passed in. Same idea. So I'm going to rerun this and I get no error messages. However, if we see there's a messages tab here and I got nothing. Okay, can somebody see what my error is? Because I got a logic error, not a syntax error. It is a really stupid error. It's too bad that I don't actually have a camera recording my face because once I saw my mistake. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a hint. My mistake is somewhere in here. Okay? Nope, it's not typecasting in this case. I'm going to take a guess. Okay, let me narrow it down a little bit. Yeah, one to zero. It's looping zero times. Yeah, and so did I trust myself. You remember when I talked about never trust a programmer? Run. Oh, look at that. Look at my password. I got a randomly generated password with all kinds of letters in here. And if I go to my messages, You'll see right here, character Q, character J, you'll see all the out the air, the notices. So this raise notice essentially is the debug messages or your system out. So you can output as you go and watch what's happening to the string. And now we can turn that one off because that just makes an awful lot of noise. And I can actually make this number bigger because I want more letters. Give it another uh, 65. We run it. Right now we've got, you know, password that includes all kinds of characters and numbers. Uppercase, lowercase. It's a pretty good password. If, ten, if you're looking about 10 digit passwords, this is a good password generator. Now, the only improvement we could do to this function now is to allow you to set how long the password is supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, so, different question. Um, how do you use in regex you replace? I can't. I can't let it. The first uh, argument it takes in is a string value. Can I use it as a variable? I'll put it as a variable. Keep telling yeah. Me let me finish doing my demo, and then I'll help you with that. Okay. All right, so let's just say we want to create a function so we allow them to default how the length of the password. So I'm going to create a, a value called length. I'm going to, it's going to be an integer. However, I'm going to do something different you haven't seen yet. That's how you set a default argument. So that means that I could run this function and not pass in the argument, and it will default to 10. So let's see if I... I'm going to prove myself wrong. Oh, now it's not unique um, because I changed how it's created. There. So, as you can see, it's defaulting to 10 all the time. Give me nice solid passwords. Let's just say I'm one of those password Nazis that loves the really long passwords. Now I can give it, and it's still doing 10. And why is it doing 10? Because I didn't change my loop length. Try it one more time. There's my 25 character password. How's that? Easy to remember, eh? That's a great password. I love it. Okay, so in this demo, I've shown you how to randomly generate numbers. I've shown you how to concatenate strings, how to initialize your variables, uh, obviously how to debug. You've seen all the bits and pieces you guys need to be able to 
do, at least the first half of this lab. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you guys is that regular expression that uh, Phil, Phil, right? So I'll never forget Phil's name. And he's going, shit, is that, did he just take a shot at me? Um, I'm just going to back up this uh, function. I want to keep this function for everybody's uh, future reference. I'll put this on Blackboard, this one. I'll put it on a Blackboard. Now, I am going to show you guys what he's asking about. Okay, regexp replace. Now he said, we can, feed, he asked, can we feed it a field name, some numbers, that kind of thing. Okay, so did they, did you, have you guys been told what reg, reg, regular expressions are? Okay, that is actually definitely a higher level later kind of function. Um, I actually gave the students in the other section the code to do this piece because it was so confusing for some of them. Because this course has to be part of level two, so you, by the time you did this, you'd have seen regular expressions. So I took a lab from one of my other, my previous courses and I did this. Smart man. All right, so regular expression is basically a string that allows you to define the content and what you want to do with it. So regex replace is, I want to replace things inside this string using this pattern. It's like pattern matching. So you know what I showed you guys how to use like and I like and similar to? Well, regex is like similar to on steroids. Um, re re regular expressions is a big giant rabbit hole where people lose themselves. Some people get obsessive about regular expressions because uh, they're just so powerful what you can do with them. Okay, so regex to replace has four arguments or parameters as you guys like to call them. The first parameter is a string. Now, if you want to, you can use um, a field name from a table instead of a string, as long as it's a character field of some sort, whether it's car, var, car, text, you can do that, no problem. The second argument is the expression that's going to be used. And in this case, the one you guys are after. Okay. Now, this is saying anything that is not 0 to 9. Um, just take my word for it, accept it for what it is in this case. Like regex could be like a two, week, two weeks worth of lectures. And I suck at regular expressions. It took me forever to figure this one out, even though it's like, you know, five characters long. So this is saying match anything that is not a number, 0 to 9. The next argument is, what are you going to replace it with? That's what the replacement. So for now, I'm going to replace it with dashes, just so you can see what it's going to do. And now I'm going to run this as is. And it helps if I hit the right run button. So as you can see, it replaced the first two characters with dashes. And it just stopped. Actually, it stopped the first character with a dash. Hang on. Just do one. One dash. That's less confusing. So it replaced the A. And you know, some people are going to say, well, that's kind of cute and all, but it's not a full, not the whole string's being operated on. You have to tell it to be greedy. Or global. So the, the G says globally replace. In other words, run this map through the whole string from start to end. So when I run this, now we're going to have dashes everywhere. Anywhere where there's a letter, I now have dashes. So if I want to do a string, a function that replaces everything, that gets rid of anything that's not a number, I just take out the dash, and I run it, and now we have just numbers, like magic. I am going to write this line on the board so you guys have roughly what you're trying to do. And it's supposed to be part of a trigger, realistically. And like I said, if you guys get to this point today, where you're starting to wonder about how to do this one, I'm not even worried if you get it done today. You can do it next week. It's all good. 
All right, I'm going to stop my recording here.